TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch, we are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells, let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Uh, if we do go live and you miss it, the highlights from the lives will be on this channel, link down below. Don't forget we do got the Patreon, the Patreon is what keeps everything afloat, man. Pays the bills, man. If you can, go support that way. Go ahead, go get your little membership. This is everything that's on there, man. Don't forget, we do got the Discord as well where you can drop your request. Um, I ain't been feeling too good. Stomach been hurting this whole day. It's Monday. Y'all see all these videos Tuesday, but yeah, let's get to it though. This is uh, top 10 scariest British criminals. So Suzanne did. Blamers was shot through the head. This was five years, four years ago? He actually made a triumphant gesture at the camera after he killed her. Fred and Rosemary West. Between them, the West raped, tortured, murdered, and dismembered 12 women, including two of their own daughters. Yeah, hey, how's it going, YouTube? I'm your host for this one, Landon Dalitzing, and today we actually have a special guest here from our sister channel, Top 5 Scary Videos. So today we have Jack. Oh, <laughs> Jack! <laughs> What's going on, guys? You may recognize me from over at Top 5. One of the best edits I've seen in a while. Smoke and mirror show, that's tough. Five Scary Videos, the scariest channel on YouTube, may I add. My name's Jack Finch, and as always, it's an absolute pleasure to be chilling with you guys over at Most Amazing Top 10. You know and you know what? Top 5 Scary uh, Videos, your channel, is getting more subscribers than we are right now. What's Whoa. going on, guys? <laughs> you guys are killing it over there. It's the t-shirts, I think. Is, you think so? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, you guys should check it out. You guys can click right over here. But let's get right into this one. So today we're going to be talking about some of Britain's most dangerous and hideous criminals that have shocked the nation. So this is the top 10. 10 scariest British criminals, and that's why we have. There's a lot. I wonder if they're gonna have honorable mention. They should have did top 20, honestly. Y'all got a few, y'all got a good little 50 piece. Y'all, I can, you can name about 50. Jack, <laughs> tell me I'm, I'm on number 10. You're the criminal, yeah. <laughs> so at number 10, we have Jack. <laughs> Coming in at number 10, Charles Bronson, probably the most notorious British prisoner of all time and a very apt entry to kick off this list. Bronson is so in. Tennis fair, tennis fair for Charles. You know, we've done Charles Bronson documentary. Just for us in the. Today, yesterday, probably, I think. British cr or did I? Maybe. criminal world that he's even been portrayed on the silver screen by the one and the only Tom Hardy. Born Michael Gordon Peterson on the 6th of December 1952, he later changed his name to Charles Bronson after the famous American actor. While he was fighting in the British underground bare knuckle boxing scene, Bronson has been referred to in the British press as the most violent prisoner in Britain and has spent the majority I didn't know he had a movie. Part of his life behind bars after initially being sentenced for armed robbery in 1974. Although he's been released several times, Bronson has always ended up back behind bars and with Bronson was severely institutionalized. That man didn't want to be free. Was given a discretionary life sentence in 1999. Despite this, in recent years, Charles Bronson has changed his name to Charles Salvador after taking up life as an artist and reportedly turning over a new leaf. He has pleaded his reform on numerous occasions, stating that Charles Bronson died in 2014 and that he leads a new life as Charles Salvador, hoping to be released in 2020. Harold Trippman makes its way on. I'm not even gonna lie to you, that sounds crazy to me. <laughs> That man didn't, didn't change his name again. First of all, changing your name the first time led you down a, a bad road. So you didn't change it again and you expect people to believe? Onto this list at number nine. He is the type of guy who will make you never trust your doctor again. And here's- Oh yeah, I remember Hero Shipman. Why? He was a British general practitioner and a serial killer who murdered at least 215 of his patients. He was taking people out. I'm talking, I'm talking, you go in there to RIP to all the victims, but you go in there just for a normal checkup. Two hours later, you gone. His favorite method of killing his victims was to inject them with a lethal dose of drugs. Originally, he was only convicted of 15 murders, but after an official investigation was done, it was determined that he had killed hundreds of other people between the years of 1975 and 1998. He was convicted in January of 2000. I 
guarantee you I've watched the documentary for all of you. And he was sentenced to life in prison, but he was found hanging in his cell four years after his trial. Could he be any more ironic? I bet he killed more than he saved as a doctor. Just so messed up. Coming in now at number eight. The crazy thing is, he was in such a position of trust, too. That was wild. It'd be the ones that you trust. Ronnie and Reggie Cray. Strangely enough, another set of British criminals that Tom Hardy has played on the silver screen. This Tom Hardy is an amazing actor. I ain't even gonna lie to you. He played both of them. This time, twice. The names Ronnie and Reggie Cray are synonymous with the British underworld and London gangland, and you probably won't find anyone in Britain who hasn't heard of these pair. They were notorious for being the perpetrators of organised crime in the east end of London during the 1950s and 1960s, alongside their gang known originally as The Firm, which led them to be involved in such nefarious activities as murder, armed robbery, hijacking, arson, protection racketeering, and countless assaults. The Cray twins were born on the 24th of October 1933, just 10 minutes apart, to parents Charles David Cray and Violet Annie Lee, and lived a life of such prolific notoriety You're not gonna bring it up? that they were cemented into British culture as two of the most dangerous brothers to have ever lived. Fred and I'll bring it up. Let's not forget the fact that they, well, allegedly they were both G-A-Y, but one of them, I forget which one, was openly G-A-Y. And he had no filter. That was the crazier one of the two. He had no mind. It was gone. <laughs> Anyway. Rose West hacked their way onto number seven on our list. They were a married couple who abducted, tortured, sexually abused, and murdered women over a period of 20 years. Their killing spree also included some of their own children. Their house on Cromwell Street contained an awful secret. Their basement was- Fred and Rose West, wow. I did not come on here expecting to see a documentary that I did not do, like people that I did not do. I'm not celebrating or anything. I'm just like, I'm surprised. Let me, I gotta write that down. Fred and Rose West. Hold on. Okay, continue was set up as a torture chamber and a graveyard. The basement was also equipped with bondage and torture devices and they had the ability to hang their victims from the wall and ceiling. Together they might have killed around 30 women but they were only charged with 12 murders. Fred West committed suicide before his trial started and West is currently serving a life sentence without the possibility of parole. Next up I, uh -uh. Yeah, I need to stay in there. Number 6 Peter Sutcliffe. Also Sutcliffe, we did him before. Didn't he murder people with a, a hammer? Known as the Yorkshire Ripper, Peter Sutcliffe. Oh, the knife guy, okay. They've terrorized the British nation between 1975 and 1980, oh, horrifying the public with the very specific conditions that his crimes contained. In 1981, he was convicted of murdering 13... Or was he with the screwdriver? ...women and suspected of the attempted murder of seven more. Sutcliffe, who lived in the Yorkshire area of Leeds and Bradford, was believed to regularly use the services of prostitutes and claimed that the voice of God had sent him on a mission to kill these women. The nation was shocked when his modus operandi would later change and he began killing women who weren't prostitutes, which inevitably sent the Yorkshire public into a panic. He was initially arrested for driving with false number plates when police questioned him about the killings on a chance encounter and he confessed to being the perpetrator. So Cliff would later plead in- So let's keep in mind about him. He didn't get caught from good police work. <laughs> he got caught by chance. Sanity, but his claim was later rejected and he was sentenced to life imprisonment where he remains to this day. Next up on this creepy list, in at number five, we have Amelia Dyer. She was originally trained as a nurse, but she eventually switched her career path and decided to take a stab at baby farming. This was a practice of adopting unwanted babies in exchange for money. She would prey on mothers who couldn't afford to keep their babies, so she would offer to give them a better life but instead she pocketed the money and strangled the baby to death with tape and dumped their bodies in the river Tame. She was able to get away with these horrific murders for over 30 years until she was caught and hung for her. Shorty was out here strangling babies for 30 years and getting away with it? How? Y'all never was wondering like oh what happened? Like what? Where is X person? Where is this person? Like it, it, it must have been off the books or something. This is ridiculous. 
her crimes. But she managed to murder at least 400 babies during Four zero. during her murdering spree in the 1800s. Okay, biting. Nobody worse than her. Oh, it was in the 1800s. His way onto this list at number four, we have Stephen Griffiths. He is notoriously known as the crossbow cannibal, and his story almost sounds too crazy to be real. But trust me, it is. His favorite pastime included murdering women with a crossbow and then eating their body parts. He asked his story on Griffiths. He is notorious. Bro, what? Like, I had a plan coming into this today, like what videos I was going to do, but like, Amelia Dyer and Stephen Griffiths. Notoriously known as the crossbow cannibal, and his story almost sounds too crazy to be real. But trust me, it is. His favorite pastime included murdering women with a crossbow and then eating their body parts. He actually turned his bathroom into a slaughterhouse where he would dismember his victims in the bathtub with power tools. And then he would start to eat his favorite body parts, in which I don't know what they are and I'm just not going to question it. So this guy actually took their body parts and stored them in the fridge until he got hungry and then he would start cooking them in the oven. He was actually diagnosed as a very violent psycho at the age of 17 years old, but despite all of these warning signs and red flags, he managed to kill three women, and now he's currently serving a life sentence without the possibility of parole. And coming in at you in there forever, buddy. Number three, Dennis Nilsson. And we're about to head down the hole of one of the most gruesome serial killers in British history. Dennis Nilsson, a Scottish serial killer and necrophile who murdered at least 12 young men, more than likely more, in a series of brutal. Oh, yeah, I, we did one on this guy, right? This is like the, uh, this is the UK Jeffrey Dahmer. Brutal and deranged killings committed between 1978 and 1983, all of which took place at several of his residences in London, England. Nielsen's modus operandi often targeted young, homeless, homosexual men, which he lured to his two North London addresses through guile and deception, often plying them with alcohol and then murdering them by strangulation. He kept the bodies beneath his floorboards, sometimes for periods as long as eight months, and would then observe the bodies in a strange, twisted ritual. He would dispose of the remains after dissecting them by either burning them on a bonfire or flushing them down a toilet. His crime That's how he got caught, right? Crimes were the plumber discovered when a plumber eventually discovered the remains of bones and flesh blocking the pipes of his shared flat, and he was sentenced to life in prison, where he died in 2018 at the age of 72. And good. How do we do a list like this and not talk about this next guy? Well, Jack the Ripper brings us to number two. Jack the Ripper is one of England's and the world's most infamous murderers because he was never captured and his identity remains unknown. He terrorized the Whitechapel District of London in 1888 where he brutally murdered and mutilated at least five prostitutes. In each of his murders, the victim's throats would be slashed and the body would be severally mutilated, which indicated that he had some kind of knowledge you know what's crazy? I've never even did any, like, I don't even think I ever, let me put Jack the Ripper on here. Never done a reaction to a, never knew who he was. I know who he was, of course, but I and the body would be severely mutilated, which indicated that he had some kind of knowledge about the human anatomy. Despite several investigations, the police had hundreds of suspects, but they weren't able to definitely arrest anyone. So he even till this day, Jack the Ripper's identity and motive remains to be one of the biggest mysteries. All right, question for this guy right here, Jack the, what's your last name? Finch. Finch, okay, <laughs> do, you, do you know the anatomy? It's not the Ripper. <laughs> no. Do you know, uh, how good are you with human anatomy? Very poor. poor. Okay, good, so you're not Jack the Ripper. I'm glad I'm not too well. <laughs> And to finally end this gruesome list, we have one of Britain's first recorded female serial killers, Mary Ann Cotton. Known as the Black Widow, Cotton is reported to have murdered around 21 people, including three of her own husbands, apparently in order to collect on their insurance policies, which she would use to establish I think we did a documentary on her. A new life, and even more horrifically, she was responsible for the death of 11 of her 13 children. Born Mary Ann Robson on the 31st of October, 1832, yes, that is Halloween, in County Durham, England, Cotton's modus operandi was- I, Honestly, I question anybody that was born on Halloween. Like, 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 come on now. I got a question for you. 
I question y'all's existence. Honestly, what are y'all up to? Halloween babies, what are y'all up to? To use arsenic poisoning, learned from her time as a nurse, that would slowly cause gastric pain in her victims and ensure a rapid decline of health. Now, this process was mostly undetectable until it appeared that almost everyone Mary Ann Cotton knew started to die around her. It kind of raised a few red flags. She was trialed and sentenced to death by hanging on the 24th of March, 1873, where she died on the gallows, not by her neck breaking, but by strangulation caused by the rope being rigged too short. Many believe that this action that was, was deliberate gnarly stuff gnarly video all right. Sounds all right so this is the end of the video it's glad to know you are not jack the ripper i think that's crazy i was i'm very shocked that i haven't seen some of these i wrote them down though maybe y'all get one of these today see y'all leave a like comment subscribe turn on your post let me hit the like button i'm gone